This is exactly right. Welcome <laughs> to the mini sode of my favorite murder. The mini sode. The podcast mini sode. This is the mini sode. That's mini Karen Kilgara. And that's tiny Georgia Hardstark over there. Hi, I'm a little baby. And a little pocket sized Stephen A. Ray Morris. <laughs> Stephen A. Ray Morris. Stephen A. Stephen Marie. Stephen Ray. Marie, you sit down and engineer this show. <laughs> Oh, guys, I was real late today to get to this recording. That's I'm very okay. sorry. I mean, I got shit done, man. Yeah, you did. Like eating a fun size, quote, snicker bar. <laughs> was it fun? It was the most fun I've ever had in my life. Was it hilarious? It was hilarious. Hey, you want to go first? Yep. Oh, this was the thing where we read shit to you. You know. The subject line of this is scuba funeral. Lighthearted? Great. I thought we'd start off lighthearted. Let's do it. Okay. Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and Pets. My family has a long history of having small things go wrong during funerals. <laughs> my mom's funeral procession got lost heading to the cemetery. No. Half of my grandpa's ashes ended up in my uncle's mouth when they were spread. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot. No. That's very common, yes. Oh, my God. People standing on a rocky cliff and the sure. wind kicks up. and We've everyone... seen the Big Lebowski. Right. <laughs> and it's, uh, one guy's really big and he's got those uh, yellow glasses on. Mm. <laughs> Things we can look back on and laugh about mm. now. But my aunt's boyfriend, Art, really said the bar for fucked up funerals. Art was ill for some time, so we had time to plan his funeral. He was an avid scuba diver and arranged a funeral at sea, even selecting a company in Florida who could provide the services. When he passed, my aunt followed his directions to a T. He didn't think his through she didn't know better, and I don't know what the fuck the KS-based mortuary was thinking. Um... Chaos. Kansas. Kansas Society. <laughs> so my aunt and two of Art's buddies fly his casket to Florida. Must have been Kansas. Uh -huh. Fly his casket, casket it to Florida. Uh -huh. And the Funeral at Sea company took it from there. Phrase Funeral at Sea is in quotes. Uh -oh. They boarded a boat, had a small ceremony, and launched the casket into the ocean. Parentheses. They probably lowered it solemnly, but I like to picture some sort of catapult mechanism. <laughs> Only problem was, Art's casket bobbed along in the water and wouldn't sink. I feel like I, I am not an engineer. I have never made a casket in my life. I feel like I could have guessed that. Yes. Right? Yeah, that there, it's just going to sit there on the top of the water if it's yeah. made of water. Okay, so, uh, asterisk at the end of sink. And then asterisk underneath with this. I did some research on this. Caskets are prepared for a funeral at sea by having holes drilled in them oh. and weights are added inside to, uh, to help the casket sink. Not happening here. Oh, shit. A diver got in the water and tried to get the casket to take on water. My aunt said he ended up climbing on top of the casket, trying to push it oh, underwater. Oh, my God. I like to think he was jumping up and down in his slippers and wetsuit. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out Art had requested to be buried in a wetsuit as a final nod to his scuba hobby. So instead of processing the body normally and potentially releasing chemicals into the ocean, mm -hmm. the funeral home just shoved his lifeless body into a scuba suit and tucked him into a casket what? where he expanded like a neoprene balloon what? and that's why the casket wouldn't see he was oh yes so in the end the boat captain sold his anchor to my aunt no shit they wrapped that <gasps> sucker around the casket and art finally sunk looking forward to seeing you in kansas oh. city in march stay sexy and just be cremated emily <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Rest in peace, Art. I loved, you yeah. know what? You tried to go for a concept. Lots of us do it. Yeah. We can't know. Luckily, he was already dead. Yeah. He was probably laughing his ass off in heaven. Sure. You can't control everything. No. And who cares? After? It's for everyone else, not for you. It's for everyone else. We're glad you like scuba diving. Yeah. Let us just cry in like the safety of a nice mortuary and go home. How about, you know, we'll get a fish tank with one of the little scuba guys opening the treasure chests in How? your honor. How about s symbolism and metaphor? Yeah, exactly. Art. And how about that's not the last thought that person fucking has of you. Okay. <laughs> um, this is called My Grandma. Nope. We were just yelling at a dead man, by the way. Oh, good. Okay. I think Art would have appreciated it. Okay. Though. Yeah, I do too. He, he was kind of quirky. Yeah. He was, he was a nut. Yeah. Uh, my grandpa hijacked his spaghetti recipe from a murderer. Mm -hmm. 
Karen, Georgia. Wait. <laughs> Georgia, Karen, Stephen. Jesus, I can't read. Hi. <laughs> Georgia, Karen, Stephen, Jesus? Yay. <laughs> Hi. I grew up in a small Wisconsin town whose claim to fame is two maximum security state prisons. Wow. These prisons have employed a shit ton of local people, including members of my own family. One of my sweet grandfathers worked in the prison kitchen until his retirement. He's known in our family for his love of horse figurines and his amazing <laughs> spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like two comedy suggestions that you could make. What does your grandpa love? At an improv show? Spaghetti! Or his figurines. <laughs> we'll use both. Let's go. This is great. Um, I always suspected hit this, quote, secret family recipe originated within the walls of the prison since it makes roughly 20 gallons of sauce at a time. Jesus. <laughs> I, man I imagine that perhaps he got it from an old Italian ex-mobster. Sure. If only. This past Christmas, I learned that this recipe actually came from the horrific piece of shit Halloween killer who murdered sweet baby angel nine-year-old Lisa Ann oh. French in 1973. You mm -hmm. know this one? Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the worst cases the state saw and essentially changed trick-or-treating laws in the area for the next 40 plus years. Mm -hmm. Lisa's badass mom is still working to keep this fuck face behind bars since he's due for release this year. Mm -mm, it won't happen. No. The entire story is terrible enough, but now even the thought of eating that spaghetti makes me want to hurl and that shit is delicious. <laughs> Smiley face. No, no, no. Frowny face. Frowny face. Frowny face. <laughs> Stay sexy and know that some secret family recipes are meant to be kept secret. All my love. S. Oh, S. S. I like that story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's like that old thing of like, make sure if you're going to like go to the carnival, don't eat something you love. Because if you, if a ride makes you throw up, you'll never want to eat that thing right. again. It's the same. When food is ruined. Yeah. Much like when bands are ruined. Yeah. They're ruined forever. Yeah. They, when, they conjure up emotions and feelings and vomit. You can, I can't listen to Elvis Costello without hearing my theater major musical theater roommate singing along with Elvis Costello in a musical theater voice. She Not to be it. funny. She oh, meant it. Oh, God. I love you. Okay, <laughs> subject line. Canadian folk dancing murder plot. Perfect. Dear Karen, Georgia, and all furry beings, Stephen and his mustache included. Oh. I'm <laughs> That's cute. Oh. Oh. I'm from a city that's at the southernmost tip of Canada, right across the river from Detroit. When I was younger, my parents enrolled my brother and I in folk dancing as an attempt to keep our Eastern European culture alive. Go for it. Uh, right? The, uh, through dancing, we met our core group of friends. And as we got older, our troupe started traveling across North America for performances and festivals. Oh. Sexy. While other groups took their dancing seriously, we were just in it for the fun. We had three dances that we recycled for years. <laughs> I mean, who's going to be like, I've seen that one before. Oh, this old bullshit. Yeah, we know. We were more focused on hosting the after parties in our hotel room yeah. at the tender age of 15. Yes. That's what it's all about. That's right. That's why you dance. That's why you travel. That's the passion of the dance is beer in the hotel room afterwards. <laughs> It was so bad that our coach would have to bribe us by saying, okay, if you don't get drunk before your performance, <laughs> I'll buy you guys alcohol afterwards to sell. This right. is what you said to me, basically. <laughs> when you were like, don't drink before shows, I'll buy you drinks after. <laughs> yep. Just please. Let's save them all up. It'll be more Fine. special. Oh, wait. Fine. Okay. I'll let you buy it. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'll tell you something. Okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. In our group, was a guy named Petar, P-E-T-A-R. Okay. Uh, he was sort of the outcast because he smelled a little funny, mm. always had clammy hands, mm. and basically looked like his family enjoyed liver and onions for dinner multiple times a week. Oh, dear. What, he had beautiful skin and a luxurious coat? Is that what you think? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what I think. As we hit college age, the group stopped dancing. I think that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good time to quit. <laughs> but maintained our close friendship, all except Petar. Petar? Uh, we would see him from time to time, but no one really kept up with him until mm -mm. dot, dot, dot. One day we saw his name in the news <gasps> and that he had been arrested for trying to kidnap and murder two sisters from our church. What? Petar sang in our church choir. He was also the altar boy for like ever. The girl's <laughs> father was the choir director and they would practice at his home. Petar used to memorize that used this time to memorize the girl's house and find out their schedule, mm. like when they would be home alone or when the house would be empty. Then he went on the internet, maybe the dark web, oh. 
and found a forum of other would-be murderers and asked them for fucking advice on how he could go about what? kidnapping and murdering these two sisters. Little did he know, he was chatting with an undercover cop. Of course of she course. were. Ding dong. And thankfully, I feel like all of the dark web is just undercover cops. Yeah. It's a bunch of pervy undercover cops yeah. who are like, I love this part of the job. Totally. Luckily, thankfully, sorry, he was arrested before he could do anything. In his room, they found multiple shrines to the oldest sister, rope, knives, and other murderous Ooh. paraphernalia. Oh my God. Um, Petar was sent to prison and his sisters were, sh- and these sisters were shipped off to Europe by their parents and no one has heard from them since. What? I remember always telling myself to be nice to him in case he lost his shit and attacked us all. <laughs> Guess my 15 year old murderino self was right. SSDGM, me. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. That is how you hometown. That's right. <laughs> this one is called BTK Sisters Lighthearted. Oh, Jesus. Hi, everyone. When my little sister and I were growing up, we spent the summers with our dad in Wichita. In the summer of 2004, the city was in a panic because BTK had suddenly reappeared. Mm-hmm. I remember there were lots of theories being thrown around at the time, like that he'd been in jail for some other crime, and that's why he'd been quiet for so long. One theory claimed that he targeted houses with multiples of three in the address, in the address, which freaked me and my sister the fuck out because we lived in a house with lots of, sh- with lots of threes, <laughs> sixes, and nines. Oh shit. Oh my god, number three, six, nine. Three, three, six, nine, six, nine. Nine street. <laughs> 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 One night when I, it was way past our bedtime, we were hanging out in my sister's room and somehow convinced ourselves that BTK was going to come in our house. So we had to arm ourselves. There were a bunch of old boxes in the room because we didn't live there most of the year. So we started digging around for a weapon and eventually found an old can of mace. Uh oh. Well, my sister was examining the mace to see if it still worked. <laughs> guess where this is going? Guess, guess. She sprayed herself in the mace. She accidentally sprayed herself in the face. <laughs> Like her own grizzly bear. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, girl. Like her own grizzly bear. Oh, that's awful. We both started freaking out, but we're too scared to wake anybody, anybody up because we weren't <laughs> supposed to be up so late and definitely weren't supposed to be playing around with weapons. And weren't supposed to be spraying yourselves in the, the face with mace. You were not. This yeah. is not a cartoon. No. We tried to flush her eyes out with water as quietly as we could. She was in a lot of pain, and I was secretly terrified that she was going to go blind. Thankfully, that mace must have been very old, because my sister was fine in the morning, and we didn't have to tell our dad <laughs> what we'd been up to the night before. They did. They got away with that. They just fucking went with it. I mean, the sister, the, <laughs> ma- the mace face, I got to give her props. I mean, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, girl. That's right. Like, I would have run screaming into my parents' room, save me, I'm dying, help me, help me. Yeah. And she was like, you're my sister, I fucking trust you. We're I'll powering go- through this. I'll go to bed, hope I see you in the morning, literally. <laughs> <laughs> what if now she has a vision like a <gasps> like a fly where she can see in eight different directions? I love it. Yeah. The BTK is his fault. <laughs> My sister is the one who got me hooked on your podcast. And the fact that we can share it together and compare our favorite murders with each other is one of the reasons why I love it so much. SSDGM, hope. Oh, hope. Oh, hope. Jesus. I mean... Truly. Just kind of laying in bed that night with like your eyes swollen yeah. shut. And Hoping. Like, oh, okay. Oh, it's okay. It's going to be fine. How to do it. <laughs> we won't get in trouble. And then what if the BTK had broken in at that moment? <laughs> that would be awful. And then he looks and he's like, oh, this is Forget really it. screwed up. Forget it. This is terrible. You guys got your own shit. Uh, <laughs> I don't want a bunch of baggage. <laughs> With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Craft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Goodbye. 
The subject line of this is my fabulous aunt Eleanor sent John List to jail. What? Yeah. Hey, my favorites. Huh. And then a smiley face with a semicolon and a line and a paragraph closer. Don't know what those are. Supposed- parentheses. Cl- close parentheses. Okay. It's just the, um, it's the winky smiley face with a weird nose that looks from, like Bert from <laughs> Sesame Street. I don't like that one. Okay. I just want colon p- close parentheses. Exactly. Standard smiley face. Standard. I don't need a nose. No. We're no. on the computer. No. There's no time. Like the nose doesn't, it doesn't convey any message. No, it, except for it reminds me a little bit of Bert from Sesame Street, sure. which is, this is not the time or place to talk about that. It looks like a dick. <laughs> oh, got it. Children are listening. Children. Oh, is this the children's hour? <laughs> yes. Hey, my favorites. Let's pretend there's nothing after that. Okay. I was on the phone with my dad today telling him about the Conan, the secret murderino episode. When I got to the part about Conan sitting in the John List trial, my dad uh, cuts in with, you know, your aunt Eleanor prosecuted John List, what? don't you? What? And then silence, line, silence, line. Oh, my God. Wait, what? Just like you said. My Mm -hmm. Aunt Eleanor is a bit of a legend in my East Coast Irish family, but not for what you'd think. She'd arrived to business casual Christmas at my grandma's in her fur full coat. Business casual Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) Fur full coat, jet black hair, freshly dyed. She'd glance up at you with piercing blue eyes. Yes, darling. But then quickly get back to her book. Everything was fabulous. (laughs) She'd bring her rum-soaked strawberry dessert that was upsetting to some and exciting Uh. to others in a house full of children and alcoholics. (laughs) It was everything you wanted to eat. And just when you thought she wasn't paying attention, she'd cut in with a hard North Jersey accent and say something hilarious. She was extremely intimidating. She was totally delightful. She was a fucking badass. My Aunt Eleanor worked as a real estate agent, a writer, and in the mid-70s, she co-founded an anti-domestic violence nonprofit. She didn't go to law school until later in life. But as with all things Aunt Eleanor, she really went for it when she did. Wow. I was seven years old in 1990, and now I know that while I enjoyed her during Christmas, earlier earlier that year, she led the prosecution that resulted in John List receiving five consecutive life sentences. Holy shit. Uh She called him, quote, a hideous angel of death, weighing the options right up until the night before killing his family, Uh. end quote. I never saw my Aunt Eleanor angry, but I can only imagine her delivery of these words in the courtroom to be righteous and chilling. She retired in 2005 and did a lot of traveling with my wonderful uncle. She was a grandma to two really cute kids. She read everything. Hmm. Now I'm typing this to you, and I guess I don't know what I would rather have seen. A young Conan O'Brien watching my Aunt Eleanor from the back of the courtroom... Or John List shitting his pants while my Aunt Eleanor convinced the jury in her words Uh, that, quote, justice should not be denied because of the delay, end quote. uh, I'd go with both. And strawberry dessert. Stay sexy and send murderers to jail. C. Uh, uh, how do I follow that up? (laughs) It's so good. We'll never do a a (laughs) minisode again. (laughs) All minisodes are canceled because of Aunt Eleanor. Aunt Eleanor? Badass. Holy shit. So awesome. All right. Well, I'll end on a lighthearted. Do it. I worked for a sex cult man. Mm. Lighthearted. Mm. And listen. Okay. A dude named Steven wrote this in. Steven Steven Bay Morris. (laughs) Steven (laughs) Ray Marie Morris instead of Marie (laughs) Ray Morris. And listen, I didn't pick it because of how he how he did the introduction, but it helped. Oh, I love you, Georgia. I love you so much. Hi, Mimi. (gasps) Oh, (laughs) (laughs) can you deal with that? And then cut to Mimi with her tiny mouth going like, "Mm, I'm fine. Why do you want to know? Get off my leg. (laughs) Mimi, That's who, the best Mimi who so peed far. on the bed three times while we were out of fucking town doing live shows this past weekend. Mimi, who will not have any of it ever. Yes. Say hi to her first and only. Only. Hi, Mimi. Hi, Mimi. I used to do tree work for a small family-run ar- aerobic... Arbre- Arborist? Arborio culture company in okay. Texas. They have to be fancy about yeah. it. If you're not hip to tree work, <laughs> and I'm not, <laughs> whenever you see a bunch of dudes wearing high visibility shirts tied to the top of a tree and totally wailing on that tree with chainsaws, those are tree workers. Hey. They are all hungover. <laughs> It was okay work, but I had to quit because I hate the winter and kept almost cutting parts of my hands off. (laughs) My boss was a gregarious middle-aged man with a few quirks, like how he was always drinking but rarely drunk. I think that one's just called having a sweet-ass time. Yeah. He claimed to be friends with the guys in Bauhaus. 
Oh. He wouldn't let his wife have a career. Uh-oh. <laughs> he spelled- So he's very German. Uh-huh. Yeah. He spelled his name backwards for no reason. Mm. Mm, don't get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name was Bob. No. What if <laughs> Um, and he kept encouraging the guys on the crew to take showers back at the shop after work. Okay, I see. Here we are. Here we go. Like, he was, like, he brought up taking showers all the time. (laughs) The warehouse wasn't even supposed to have showers in it, but my boss personally built them. No! He liked showers so much. No! I asked my foreman about the showers thing, and he told me that under no circumstances should I ever (laughs) take a shower at the warehouse because my boss was in a sex cult. I did a little snooping and the sex cult my boss was in was called Zendik Farm. It was started by Errol and Wolf, both fucking German names, right? Yeah. Zendik in the 60s as a hippie, hippified cultural revolution that mostly just sold bumper stickers at farmer's markets and played psychedelic jam music. Okay. Their version of free love was to enforce a round robin style roster of sex partners so that by the end of the season, everyone was fucking everyone. I don't know why. (laughs) No, I see it. I see the thinking. Yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then fuck that person. Just, yeah, fuck them. Yeah. Do it. Just fuck. The compound my boss had lived in was in Bastrop, Texas, kind of by Austin. It was supposed to have a, have disbanded in 2013, but I went to a Labor Day party at my boss's house and all the sex cult guys were totally there. Uh, and they were totally still on board with the whole sex cult thing. <laughs> my boss got a few sodas in him and he started loudly insisting that everyone come out to the backyard and take a bath in a custom hot tub he had built. Oh my God. My wife and I went home, <laughs> but one of my coworkers took him up on it. He said it was nice, but not a very good hot tub. Yes, don't make a hot tub. Because it sounds like it was probably a bathtub. Yeah. Uh, I work at a record store now. Store? A le store. I work German. at a record sh- store now. <laughs> and sometimes people send us old Zendak Farm or, 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 or orchestra records. They're actually pretty fucking groovy. <laughs> Stay sexy and don't take a bath with your boss. <laughs> Steven in Texas. Steven! In Texas! Uh- Oh, I loved anything but learning about the inner lives of an arborist. Sex Come on. Cult. Arborist. Why couldn't I pronounce? I mean, why am I asking that? It's it's not really in our in our nomenclature. Mm-hmm. Oh. Bing, 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 bing. Hi, Mimi. Hi, Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> fuck, send us your shit to my favorite murder at Gmail. Great batch, everybody. Good Great job. work. We Thank did you it. so much. These are the best the best you write them and we read them it's the best it's the best the best um thank you so much thanks stay sexy and don't get murdered goodbye, goodbye. elvis you want a cookie <laughs>